This conference will now be recorded. Right. So uh, yesterday I have given uh, introduction about the kind of focus areas. What is that uh, uh, we must be knowing about in reference to the certification of professional scrum master. So the very first thing, what is that we must be knowing? This is the first one which we are going to discuss in today's session about understanding and applying the scrum framework on what basis because being a scrum master apart from the exposure in reference to the sprint planning review meeting retrospections all that stuff apart from that we must be knowing about how you need to apply scrum framework when we are working on real environment which is essentially important to understand with so there are some focus areas yesterday i have given uh, an high level understanding about the list of focus areas on all the aspects of uh, psm orientation here we must be knowing about the focus areas the first focus area under applying the scrum framework is called as empiricism before we are getting into the empiricism part we must be knowing about why and for what reason scrum frameworks and all everything will be implemented in any of the application development because as i already mentioned a few days back if you remember the difference i have explained you difference between implementation of scrum versus kanban if you remember let me repeat again for you so as agile way of approach whenever we follow as a methodology there are some frameworks and processes we were using so agile is one kind of framework which is widely used across application development for a very long time as due to there are different different reasons why we are choosing or why we are applying scrum framework in agile the first thing is about roles that's what i have explained because there are three different roles where when people who are transforming from them from the traditional model to agile way of approach this transformation will be much easier because they ha you have a product owner role as separate you will be having a team member scrum team as separate followed by scrum master so these are the three different roles you see in reference to the scrum framework itself is concerned when you are comparing this with kanban you don't find that this is point number one point number two when we are following scrum framework this is majorly based on in reference to the empiricism itself is concerned based on three different pillars especially in reference to applying of scrum framework but before getting into the pillars of empiricism let us understand what exactly this empiricism is all about empiricism is the focus area when we are applying a scrum framework in application development either it may be a project development or a product development where it works majorly focusing based on the facts and as well as the evidences because we have to establish we must be understanding about the kind of facts which are essentially required when we are working on something because whatever is needed whatever is really important what are really needed for an application to develop or to product to develop is essentially required for us so when we are working on the scrum framework the facts has to be understood means what facts we have understood when we are working on a particular application based upon the kind of events as well as the kind of ceremonies and as well as the practices we are following based upon the real need of the customer at the same time unless until if there is no evidence based approach normally we don't apply scrum framework there so facts has to be understood evidence based process should also be adopted here because this is not something based on the exaggeration right so no assumptions nothing because most of the applications if you see in real environment in reference to the traditional model you might have understood there is a concept called assumptions and dependencies i think uh, 
people whoever is belongs to business analysis will be knowing this well in advance there is a concept called assumptions and dependency when you are providing solutions what is assumptions and dependency assumptions dependencies means assumptions based upon the information what is that we have so that assumption that's an assumption which is may, which may not be 100 percent true all the times at the same time dependency is also there dependency means what are the dependent factors when we are developing any kind of application this is what generally assumptions and dependencies are but whereas when we are following agile practice in reference to the applying of scrum framework whatever we are implementing and whatever we are working on in reference to the epics or user stories whatever are we uh, implementing all that everything should have a clear understanding followed by the evidences and all everything is needed so no assumptions and dependencies will be taking into an account when we wants to apply scrum framework in our product or project development this is the first point second point this is something majorly focusing on the kind of observations based upon the realities what practically required now when we talk about the observations can anyone say either Milly or Dhvani any one of yours can you say what are the observations being a solution provider or being a scrum master or someone or the team members in reference to the scrum what observations of reality has to be taken into an account any idea you please text if you are not able to speak can you text me your answers please what observations of reality we have to keep in keeping into an account what are the observations of reality we have to keep into an account what are your ideas on it so observations based upon the client need uh -huh. requirements may change uh -huh. next apart from that of course client needs are needed requirements may change volatility in requirements are we talking about yes require next apart from that work recommendations will also change uh -huh. next what are the observations in rooms in reference to the reality we have to understand apart from the need see unless until if there is no no need customer never approaches at the same time volatility in terms of the changes in requirements will also be taking into an account that is also accepted skills of the team skills of the team is your part right so skills of the team is not an observation right so skills of the team is what you have to your team should be adopting with right so your team has to adopt that so there is no other uh, way around so what else are the observations we have to keep in mind the observations yeah the product okay the product development is required but observation is the kind of goal what customer wants to achieve that must be the observation i'll tell you an example to you let's say we are developing a product something relating to an e-commerce or a healthcare okay now customer is investing some amount of money to develop that customer is investing some amount of money on it now when customer wants to invest some amount of money into this what is that we have to do first first you need to understand few points first of all we need to understand the vision i'm writing on the text box please follow first of all we should know we must understand we must understand the vision of the customer vision of the company we must understand the vision of the organization or a company now what is vision here vision nothing but the kind of plan which they wants to reach in another five in another years right so in coming years it may be five years or ten years and all that thing is what we need to know so observation is what based upon the vision of the organization first of all understanding the vision second in order to implement this vision what kind of vision 
are they following this also should be understandable so vision of the company is required in terms of the observation second if you want to implement that vision if you want to make it into reality so what mission statement they were taking into an account should be taking into an account right so vision next after vision and mission next plus what was the next point the kind of objectives followed by objectives followed by the goals which client wants to achieve objectives and goals which client wants to achieve so these objectives may be a business objective these goals may be a long term as well as the short term goals right so we must understand the business objectives what client wants to achieve point number 1 right what are their objectives they wants to achieve at the same time we must be knowing about the goals these goals may be a long term goals these goals may be a short term goals even so long term goals followed by the short term goals is what we have to understand right so these long term goals the short term goals are the part of long term goals what is that we wants to achieve right so this is the third point so vision should understand in order to implement that vision what kind of mission they were following in order to implement that mission what are the objectives and goals which they wants to achieve point number 3 next followed by this the next point we must be knowing about the kind of business strategy business strategy they are following they are following to reach this goal okay what kind of business strategy they are following to reach the goal followed by the business strategy we must be able in a position to understand for this to implement means for this means for this business strategy to implement implement what kind of tactics they are following what kind of tactics they are following tactics i think i might put tactics right so what kind of tactics they are following is what you need to understand so these are the observations which majorly this empiricism and all everything are based on so this is where i have mentioned you in the first point i have mentioned you you need to understand the facts based on the kind of experience what we have carried so far at the same time we must be knowing about the evidences what are the evidences here evidences nothing but the kind of vision they wants to achieve the kind of mission statement followed by the kind of objectives and goals which they wants to achieve in order to achieve those objectives and goals what kind of business strategy they wants to implement followed by the business strategy what are the tactics they wants to follow so these are the aspects which being a scrum master one must be understood in reference to the first focus area of empiricism is all about is it clear to everyone yes sir your self many clear or not now right so this is what generally we call it as empiricism stands for now when you want to implement implement this empiricism especially in, when you are applying scrum framework when you want to understand it as well as applying scrum framework there are some three different pillar pillars we have to focus on so what are those three pillars the first pillar is called as transparency first pillar is called as transparency first point second inspection third followed by adoption 
So what is meant by transparency here? What is meant by transparency? What is transparency is transparent? Because if you want to implement an empiricism in while you are applying the scrum framework, facts as well as the evidences are the major aspects. So facts and as well as evidences based upon the observations what we had done. So observations are nothing but the vision, mission followed by the business strategy, goals, objectives and goals, business strategy followed by tactics. Right. So these are the observations. Now, if you want to implement an empiricism in Scrum framework while we are applying, these are three different pillars we have to follow. One is transparency. Second is adoption followed by inspection. Now, what is transparency transfer? What is transparency here in reference to the team while we are implementing what transparency is transfer? What is meant by transparency? Transparency is nothing but team among the team, even though you are a scrum master, along with the development team, among ourselves, whoever are working on the agile team or the scrum team. Transparency in terms of establishing the facts is essentially important. So nothing to be hidden, right? So no hide no, no hideouts, nothing. Right? So there is nothing. The concept called hideout here. Whatever are we working on, whatever we are studying, maybe for example, when we are talking about the duration, let's say for example, when we are talking about sprint duration, right? Sprint duration must be based on the facts. What are those facts? For example, when we are talking about two weeks of the sprint, we have taken. So when we are taking two weeks of the sprint, what is that we have to follow? We have to follow the reality and as well as the transparency that how many working days do we have in that particular sprint? Right? This is the first point. And next, here is a question. Let me explain this. Uh, this question like facts and evidence need to be conveyed to the client and team clearly. Yes. Right? So facts and errors must be conveyed to the clean team and as less to the client clearly. Right? So this is the first point. This is the uh, observation. Now, in reference to the transparency itself is concerned, in addition to the point, what is that uh, you have texted? So transparency means team, whoever is working, should have a clear understanding about what they are doing and for what reason they were doing. Right from the duration of the sprint you have taken. Let's say, for example, two weeks is the sprint we have taken. Sometime back, I have to when we are talking about two weeks of sprint, what is meant by two weeks? Two weeks means working days. Working days for five into two, ten working days we are taking into an account. If there are any holidays, those holidays will be taking out. So this is a fact. Assume that if you if your team is not following these facts, what will happen? Assume that if you are talking about two weeks. The fact is, the fact of the matter here is 10 working days. If there is any holidays, we are reducing that even. Assume that we don't have any holidays of that sort. So let us confine this to 10 working days. This is a fact. And this is a transparency which is required among the team members who are working on the Scrum project. Now, as an example, assume that these facts are not established with the team members what will happen there is a possibility of failure of failure of the sprint why because people doesn't have any clear idea about how much duration we are working on right so we don't know what duration and how much duration are we working with. so the fact is if it is two weeks of the sprint the working days were 10 right so in terms of the duration i am talking about point number one the facts are this. Second, transparency in terms of the expertise as well as the capacity and capability of the team to work with. So we should have a trust and we should, the team should also have the capacity to complete the given task and all everything within the specific timelines. If you want to do that, what is that you require? First of all, you need to have enough timelines with you. You need to have enough timelines with you. Not only the and not only of enough timelines, 
at the same time we should able in a position team should able in a position to complete the given task within the specific timelines for that they they require some technical capacity technical capacity is also required if they don't have any technical capacity let's say what will happen now assume that there is no technical capacity of the team so even though you have given two weeks of time which is whichever you feel is sufficient may not be helpful to the team right so what is that we have to see we have to see the duration part which is the fact which we should understand the transparency is required at the same time what kind of technical capacity which team is having so that's the reason whenever we are working on the scrum team or being a scrum master when someone is taking up the task so we have to evaluate the capacity and the capability this is where if you remember we used to prepare uh, velocity charts all that stuff if you remember on jira i have shown that right? velocity charts all that so why velocity chart velocity chart will clear will clearly explains you the evidences that based upon the previous records of the sprint what they have completed what is the capacity of the team to complete the remaining portion of the work right so this is where we will be knowing about the technical technical capacity of the team so being a scrum master followed by the team members should have the transparency among the technical capacity do they have the technical capacity to complete the given task on time or not so technical capacity is required timelines were also needed now the third point in reference to the transparency as far as the facts itself is concerned we should have a clear understanding about the need of the product owner or the customer assume that because most of the sprints normally we get failed due to this reason this is what we call it as impediments of scrum so what is an impediment of scrum impediment of scrums are as follows first point team doesn't follow any timelines to complete with this is the first point second point second point team doesn't follow men who is this right so team doesn't follow the timelines first point first first point is that team is not following the timelines second even though team is following the timelines team have uh, what we call the team doesn't have any technical capacity to address the problem right so they are lacking in technical capacity that could be one reason third point technical infrastructure might be might not be sufficient for them to work with this is one thing please close your camera right? don't switch on your camera please it disturbs a lot please thank you right so this is the next point followed by that one more point what is that we need to understand here is we must understand whether team is able in a position to understand what customer goal wants to achieve this is where generally sprint goal comes into picture so why are you creating a goal for the sprint why are we creating goal for a sprint because goal for a sprint we are creating because we wants to reach that particular objective what product owner wants to achieve so these are the impediments of the scrum impediment of scrum may be of different reasons technical capacity of the team has to be addressed technical infrastructure do we have sufficient technical infrastructure should be taking into an account at the same time we have to consider whether the team is rightly understood the product requirements or not should also be taking into account so these are the aspects which we need to understand in reference to the transparency of the transparency of the empiricism is all so transparency is something essentially important so transparency nothing but presenting the facts establishing the facts <coughs> among the team why is it required if you don't establish these facts on uh, on team right so if there, for example if there is no facts known to the team there are high possibilities of failure of the particular sprint or the particular release on time while we are implementing the scrum so 
Imprecision is completely depending on three different pillars. The first one is transparency among the team members while they are working on something is essentially equal. Right? So this is the first point. Second point, we are talking about inspection. What is meant by inspection here? What is inspection stands for? What does it mean by inspection? What does it mean? Anyone? What inspection is? Why inspection required? Inspection means knowing about the quality, right? That's what generally we feel. This is a general uh, understanding, right? Inspection is nothing but whether the product what you are developing is clear or qualitative or not. Right? This is what generally our understanding in reference to the inspection is. Now, quality of the work, yes, right? Whatever has been developed has. Do we have the quality of the work or not is what we call it as inspection agreed right this is a general statement actually next second one to ensure the products being produced is meeting the goals uh okay right so it's end of the day nothing but the quality right so because if you are not giving the quality output then it won't uh, meet the goals of the uh, product what customer wants to achieve right so this is an inspection so for this purpose inspection is required so to get a quality output or the kind to get a quality uh, deliverables of the work what is that you are going to do is what we call it as inspection now here is my question who does this inspection who will be involving in inspection any answer from your end who is going to involve in inspection here when we are talking about scrum framework implementation scrum owner who is scrum owner or scrum team scrum master you are talking about okay scrum master okay okay scrum master okay scrum master product owner along with development team okay it's only a scrum team no normally more yes it's a combination of everyone Normally, inspection means inspection because general tendency or general perception for ours is inspection will be done by an individual or a maybe a role. It may be a scrum master or someone, right? That's how generally we think of. But here, inspective inspection is a collective responsibility of the members who are there in the team. Remember this point. Inspection is a collective responsibility of the team when they are going to follow the activities inspection nothing but collective responsibility of the team inspection has to be done by all the team members this is where i have given a clear example here to you uh, yeah if you see here i have just clearly mentioned here right so on the same so scrum team which combination of product owner Scrum master followed by the developers. All these people have to be taken care of when it comes to the inspection of the work. Right? So inspection is not something confined only to a particular person who is performing the activity. It is never uh, we never do that. Right? So not not one person do uh, no one person do this inspection all the time. Inspection must be a collective responsibility of the team whoever is working on the particular task or the product now what is that they are going to inspect is it only a quality part because this continuous improvement something relating to quality whatever you have given the answer is right but is it only a quality we see inspection only refers to the quality of the product general general explanation whatever you have given is yes yes in order to meet the goal continuous improvement is required Continuous improvement leads to quality of the output accepted. But is it only a continuous improvement in quality we see? No. We have to see the product, how it is developed. We should understand the product strategy, product skeleton, means product outer layer of the product. All these things has to be inspected. What kind of product is this? Right? So why is this product we are developing? what kind of goals as somebody has stated in the text box right so what kind of goals are we planning to achieve so why are these goals we were providing here 
at the same time what kind of goals the team is team is performing here at the same time what kind of quality of work are we going to do all these things comes under the product part right so when it comes to the inspection we need to know about the product at first right so inspection of the product why is this product what is this product what are the characteristics of this product quality of what kind of quality we were expecting customer is expecting end of the day in what way this product is being used for the customer when they wants to implement that when they were want to use it into reality is what we must be doing. second process has to be followed process inspection should also be done by the team what is meant by process inspection this is where in the beginning if you remember when i have told you an example to you you may be a technically you may be a good person right so you may have a technical expertise to work on the development or the coding part whatever it is but as long as if you don't follow the right values and principles of the agile you will not be taking it in account your 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 uh, what we call your involvement won't be there right or not so what is that i said even though you are qualitative person in terms of the technology as long as if you don't follow the right values and principles of agile you will not be considered as an agile team member so for that what is required what is the process of agile so why are we using agile what kind of value systems as well as the principles agile should uh, expect us to implement so that has to be understood so when it comes to the reality normally this is a human tendency where we take a deviation we don't follow the same thing, right? so there is a deviation which normally takes place in order to reduce this deviation and all that what is that we need to understand we should understand that process as well so process inspection should also be done what process we are following and whatever the process we are following whether are we following the right values and principles what agile adopted or what agile consists of third point people aspects as well as the practices what are the aspects of the people do we have followed by this what are the practices they are following because process as well as the practices which are something interdependent which is something connecting to the people as well next continuous improvement yeah, you guys have told me the same answer right? so quality quality of the output is what is required so inspection is also an another pillar under people system inspection must be done by all the team members not by a single person so no single person interference is here will be entertained so it is every team members responsibility even a product owner has to inspect the scrum master has to inspect followed by this development team should also be inspecting these points so this is what we call it as inspection stage now the third point we are talking about adoption right adoption what is meant by adoption i think i have given some uh, i have written something wrong uh, the spelling is mistake adoption right adopting adopting or adoption what is meant by adoption what do you feel or what is meant by adoption uh, adoption is only a change okay change has to be adopted accepted is it only adoption we consider when we are talk considering uh, the change into an account is it only for change any inputs from you guys improvement uh huh next improvement and adopt changes based on what you are doing adopting something right adopting some xyz based on what based on that results of the inspection right based on the results of the inspection it's not based upon the need it's based upon the results of the inspection so why are we doing this inspection here why are we doing this inspection inspection we are doing why because in this inspection we will be knowing about how the product strategy and how are we implementing what kind of processes we are following here what kind of people aspects followed by the practices 
what are the continuous improvements of the quality everything has will be inspected here so based on the inspection whatever the results you have identified that has to be adopted it is not something only need this is not something only change it could be anything right so based on the inspection whatever the results you have identified that has to be adopted so transparency is required so when there is a transparency there will be a clarity so when there is a clarity next is the inspection means whatever the work process is going on everybody has to understand the facts here so once everybody has inspected once everybody has understood everything they have to adopt that so why this adoption is required this adoption is required on four different points first why you have to do this adoption based upon the inspection results what you have identified that is completely based on few points first faster time to market because you can release product to the market very fast as long as you are following the process as fast as as what we can automatically you can fast in your product and you can release your product on time into the market this is what we call it as faster time to market first point second increase return of investment through value based delivery for example if i am a product owner or a customer i am investing some amount of money in the product right so why am i investing it what is the reason behind it i am investing for just for the sake of improving the uh, service improving the quality is it just because of it behind that what is my reason i mean let's see for example you may you, for example you are investing some amount of money in stock market right for example so why do you invest money in stock market or somewhere because monetary wise you should get benefit out of it right or right return of investment you are investing some x amount of money in the stock market again as to that you expect some return of investment out of it agree right so this is where we have to understand the return of investment so when return of investment will be there for a customer customer is amount spending some x amount of money in that right so when the return of investment customer a customer will get when you are providing a value based delivery to the customer then only the return of investment will be there for the client so faster time to market the product this inspection leads to by this adoption and all everything we have to we have to consider because faster time to market second you have to increase the return of investment based upon the value based services what you are delivering to the client right or not so customer is investing some x amount of money for the product you to develop so in return to that customer wants some return out of it return in what way return may not be monetary directly because this is not the stock market right so they are implementing this value based delivery system what we have implemented in their business process against to that in terms of the services or through services whatever the monetary benefit that's how the return of investment will be getting back to the customer so this is the second point which we are being relate upon third point reducing the total cost of ownership what is meant by cost of ownership here what is your observation what is meant by cost of ownership reducing the cost of ownership is there okay let us discuss it later what is meant by cost of ownership cost of ownership means the amount of money they have to invest to use that product that's what we call as cost of ownership so because for example you guys are developing a product and you have given to me the product was good absolutely fine there are all the features and all but in reference to the maintenance part itself is concerned at the same time the kind of investment i want to make to use the product is in a higher note what will happen now i cannot manage that product for a long time why because investment cost maintenance cost is more to me so being when you are developing a product for a customer what is that you have to see reducing the total cost of ownership should be yes sir that's the reason why if you remember if you have seen the market nowadays 
given i have given examples couple of examples earlier in cloud based applications we are developing now so why market is tending towards cloud based environment because when you are changing yourself into cloud environment you don't require to manage any kind of infrastructure so the total cost of ownership for an end user is becoming zero almost less i don't say zero but almost less right almost less why because there is a cloud service provider who is taking care of all that so total cost of ownership is getting reduced why how how you are going to do this this you are doing by enhancing the quality of the software what is that you are going to use clear everyone yes or no clear or not right so this is the third point next fourth point what was the fourth point improved customer and employee satisfaction end of the day when we are improving or when we are reducing the cost of ownership in reference to in connect to the software quality what is that you are providing end of the day customer will be satisfied customer will be happy right so this is the first focus area in reference to the empiricism is what you need to understand and that once when you are trying to apply scrum framework and all the first focus area is this empiricism is the first focus area under applying the scrum framework in this three pillars you have to adopt three pillars are one is transparency second inspection third is adoption adoption i think i have written some uh, the, uh, the word i have written adoption it is it's, it's adaption i have adaptation adoption it is adoption right so these are the three different pillars of empiricism is all about ah, adoption right adoption that's what it is right adoption is this so uh, next focus area we are going to discuss tomorrow and this of course there are few more focus areas which to be discussed after that we will be going about one more important area okay right so this is all for today we'll meet tomorrow we'll be discussing about the next focus area after emphasizing under applying the scrum framework see you then bye see you then bye we'll meet tomorrow